Welcome everybody to IWE Battle Zone TV. Uh, Scrappy back here with you. We got Axel Gear back, and I, I, I've got to be honest, it's the first time I've ever been happy to see this guy. Axel Gear back here with us doing his thing, and we're getting ready for a uh, another IWE Hall of Fame induction. That's absolutely right, Aaron. Oh. Holy crap, where did I go? There you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, that's all right. I can hear me. And I can see the wrestling! This is cool. I've been away! It's nice to have you back. I can't believe I'm uttering those words, but it is nice to have you back. It is nice to be back, and it's nice to see you again there, Scrappy. Thank you. I am, of course, Axel James Gear, alongside Scrappy. And, uh... Stuntman Mike's got the mic. So, I guess that's where we'll start. Hold the mic, how you guys doing? Brother of Jason Locke, one of the uh, original commentators here okay. for IWE. So, our first inductee is known as Dudley Dawson. His real name is Jason Locke. And I had the honor of working with Jason in multiple companies. Jason was a great guy, great sense of humor, always had a Simpson reference in mind ever since the day I met him. The kid knew everything about wrestling, he wanted to talk to you every night about it. Like I said, he was a great man. I was very honored to be a friend of his, to be in multiple companies with him. You guys saw him in here, he used to be Roberto Cruz's personal ring announcer. So at this time, I'd like to introduce you with your brother's award. Uh, 
Santa's definitely over, no doubt about that. But how we could had you Santa here from the North Pole? Everybody likes Santa except for, for Stuntman Mike. Everybody likes Santa except for Philly fans. But that's a whole other story. He's got a present. I want a present. It's not even Christmas yet. Santa came early for Stuntman Mike? I always wanted a box. Is that what he said? Well, he got one. And our third inductee to the Hall of Fame, Stuntman Mike for the class of 2022. Surprise! Surprise! Surprise. Stuntman Mike made the IWE Hall of Fame. Of course, had no idea. So uh, I'm not sure how he's <laughs> what he's going to do. All right, let's give it up to the Hall of Fame class! Stomp Man Mike, surprise inductee to the 2022 IWE Hall of Fame. And now his... And he's okay. <laughs> Seemingly lost for words. This is a fantastic way to kick off Absolutely. IWE Battle Zone TV. Stuntman Mike. All right. We move on to our show yeah, proper. Now we get on to the good stuff. Our first match about to begin here. Why is this guy coming down to referee? And alone by, like, of all things. Dan Tanner to referee. Player one. And Mr. IWE, oh, may I remind you. Derek Crow. And uh, his, uh, and uh, you weren't here last last uh, show, but uh, do you recognize that guy? I cannot say that I do. Well, the promos have been out there. That, my friends, is Amicus. That is Amicus? He came out, as you may know from the last episode of Battlezone TV, and uh, helped Derek throw with his victory over John Campbell. Derek Crow never one to shy away for an opportunity to make himself look better. Continuing to talk himself up as a submissions expert. Well, and looking for any reason to, to spread that knowledge around. Well, and you don't think he can do it? I think he's proven that he can do it. He's certainly proved that he can do it, but he spends an awful lot of time talking about it for somebody who can back it up. This microphone is in my hands. I need you people shut your mouth. So, and this is what I'm talking about. This is how he wants to start things. If he wants people to recognize his ability, he needs so to, he need, they need to the show him some respect. Today, why have I aligned myself with Amicus? The answer to that question, I'm going to give to you right now. It's because of you people. Why I did. Oh. Because you are the most toxic group of people I've ever. Tell them. See, when you want to sleep, fans, you don't get your way. You run online to your little message boards and you complain and you try to hijack shells with your stupid little chants like Player Two and your stupid little signs, and I'm sick of it. And Amicus is just as sick of it as I am. 
so we have a common goal. Now, as for tonight, I have issued an open challenge. The player one open challenge. Rules are very simple. Anybody wants to come down, they can beat me however they want. But I can only win by submission. And who is to sweeten the deal? See? I'm only going to give myself 10 minutes to show just how good I am, especially in comparison to you all. See, putting his money where his mouth is. So whoever wants to accept the player one open challenge, now is the time. You know what? Fair enough to Derek Crow. Installing himself a, a 10 minute time limit and the restriction that he can only win by submission. These I, restrictions do not apply to his opponent. I, I love it. And uh, new to IWE, David Weston. You might remember him from the Mayo show, I believe. I do. He had a very strong and convincing opening time there. Uh, I, I was hoping to see, by the time it was over, I was hoping that I would get to see more. And here it is, I'm getting the chance to see David Weston once again. Well, an open challenge against Derek Crow, definitely a way to be noticed in IWE. Oh, dude, not wasting any time getting right into the face of player one. Or was that Derek Crow getting into David Weston's face? No fear from either man. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's opening contest is the player one open challenge of his set four. Introducing first, from Birmingham, Michigan, weighing in at 165 pounds, Dave Weston! Fans firmly behind Dave Weston here. And here we go, the disrespectful chant start again with these fans. And, and irate is an understatement, and so he should be. And his opponent, from Redmond, Washington, he is the next level of greatness. He is the Dragon Slayer, Mr. Butt row. Now, Joe, was he, was tread he, lightly here. He's stepping on He's got to tread lightly with, 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 you know how player one is about this. Yes, I know. The man who ended the creature feature. Whoa. Wait, wait a minute. Hey, do you see him anywhere? Wait a minute. Hey, I'm just saying. I'm not saying, but I'm saying. Do you see him anywhere? Player one, Derek Crow. Uh. If he truly, if Derek Crow truly wanted us just to, to respect him for his wrestling ability, it would not matter what the fans chanted at him. It wouldn't matter what they said, and it wouldn't matter what happened outside the ring. Speaking of happening outside the ring, John Campbell's injury did not occur during his match with Derek Crow. It is an unrelated matter, and it is very an unfortunate one too. It was. It, it, it is. It is incredibly unfortunate for John Campbell. And if you're not up to speed, then you really need to get on our social media's IWE Imperial Wrestling Entertainment all across social media, and of course on YouTube and. And IWGladiators.com to raise a valid point. And, That's and player one is already working an arm. Oh, and Dave Weston, though, reverses, gets a hold of that same arm on the other side. Very quickly, though, does Derek Crow grab a hold of the ropes and now rolls outside? Well, Amicus. Perhaps this, with some words of wisdom here. Well, this is smart, too. The second pair of eyes on the outside of the ring maybe sees something in David Weston that Derek Crow can use to his advantage. A weak spot, perhaps. The fans getting in the ear of player one. And this is what Derrick Crow needs not to do. He can be counted out here. He can lose by count out, but he cannot win by count out if the tables turn. Yes. He can only win by submission in the player one open challenge. Dave Weston can do whatever he wants to win. But Derrick Crow must submit his opponent. Wow, does this and Tanner oh, wow. ever have a lightning fast count to try to get the submission hole broken up once they had gotten up into the ropes. Now Dave Weston now has Derek Crow down on the mat. Yeah, that crazy, left arm restrained. Yeah, that crazy arm drag into that shoulder lock there. Yeah, that shoulder has been a problem 
for uh, Derek Crow. And this is a smart move by uh, Dave West. And now he doesn't have to win by submission, but this is probably a smart move to work that joint. But Absolutely right. And now Derek Crow. Just too good. Just too good. Arm drags of his own. That's why he's player one, baby. That's why he's player one. It's an arm wrench submission here, but Dave Weston gets to the bottom rope. Tanner started a five count there for Derek Crow to let go of the hold. It was noticeably slower than when the tables had been turned in the opposite direction, when Dave Weston had Derek Crow tied up in the ropes. Ooh. Oh, the slap I can't help but face. see. I can't help but see a little bit of referee bias happening in this match, and what a shot! What a shot from Dave Weston. Knocks Derek Crow straight down to the mat. Rolls back out of the ring. He wants a timeout, but that's not how this works. A count out has begun. Just needs to regroup. Just needs to regroup a little bit. But Dave Weston, not looking to end it that way, goes out and chases after him. Club to the back, club to the head. Two of them now. Oh, a chop to the chest. Derek Crow rolls back into the ring. And Dave Weston going well, up top. Right up to the top. He wasn't wasting any time either. Off the top rope. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Caught the arm. He caught the arm. He caught the arm. Caught that arm in, a, in like a, a... Didn't keep a hold of the arm, but, but I don't think he needed to. That could have bopped it right out of socket. And now Derek Crow goes right to work on it. Ah, and this is it. This is what he's talking about. By submission. Does Dave Weston even have a chance to get to a rope here? Can he get, do anything about this? Derek Crow is in solid control of him. All of his weight right up on top of him. But it's not going to get the job done. Derek Crow sensed it. Throws him into the turnbuckle. Now player one lines up his shot. Oh, what a spear! Right out of the corner! Oh. Dave Weston spears player one! What I a shot! It. Player one writhing and pain. Oh no! But Amicus just shoved Dave Weston off the top rope. I, I think he just tripped or something. That was absolutely Amicus pushing him off the edge. Okay, well, maybe it was, but still. Derek Crow with a nasty arm in DDT. And there it is. Oh, there man. There it is. There it is. This is that where double arm stretch out. with the bridge upon it. Where does, what does Dave Weston do now but tap out? What else can he do? Derek Crow. Derek Crow is the winner of this match. Oh, he's asking for the mic. Now we want to gloat about it. Get him out of yeah. I they, told you this was my time now. I said I gave myself ten minutes, and I'm pretty sure I still got time left. So if anybody else would like to accept my open challenge, oh, now you is your time. And Amicus, I think the thing. Wow, Derek he Crow sent is Amicus to the dismissing back. Dismissing Amicus. There's further proof that he can do this alone. I mean. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh is right. Rocky Shocker! Fan favorite Rocky Shocker former, with that goofy haircut. Former IWE Tag Team Champion. And champion of the universe, if I recall correctly. At least he's not playing that god-awful guitar that he used to play. What are you talking about? I'm hearing it playing over the loudspeaker right now. No, that. What was that cat sound we used to get? This might be his solo from that single about to drop. Oh, yeah, is it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Everything I ever learned in the music industry just fell out my ear hole after I heard that. I'll help you pick that back up later. I'll yeah. get you a new one. Yeah, I need new a mop for that, probably. Rocky Shocker, a little bit more seasoned than Dave Weston here in IWE. He's accepting the open challenge. Player, player one is not happy. He is not happy to see Rocky Shocker out here. 
That's what happens when you issue an open challenge. Anyone can answer it. Well, I, you know what? I got to give it to you there. An open challenge is exactly that, and this is what happens sometimes. So. Oh, my goodness. We got Rocky Shocker chants going on out here. Oh, I feel like I live in Bizarro Land. Fan favorite is an understatement. Yeah, no doubt. Derek Crow, Derek Crow is angry but ready. Rocky Shocker, ready as ever. Been a while since we've seen Rocky in the, the singles competition, really. Been a tag team specialist for a while. But let's see what he could do against player one. Starting this match up with a slap to the face and now Rocky Shocker blasts him back down. But he's not taking it. And any again, crap. Rocky Shocker, just to remind everybody the rules of this match here. If this is once again a, Derek, or a, a player one open challenge. It's the same, the same deal. Same rules. Yep. Derek Bro must win by submission. His opponent has no such restriction. Oh, man. Just sweeps those legs out from underneath Rocky Shocker and sent him airborne into the corner. And now he's working that leg. Oh, leg. Brilliant. Like a, a DDT to the leg. Like, well, it's at that leg wrench. Yeah, he's trying to hyperextend that knee. Oh. And whereas Derrick Crow was focusing on the on that left arm of Dave Weston, he seems to be focusing on the left leg here of Rocky Shocker. He fancies himself a master of submissions. He's got a thousand holds. Well, and he's winning them. He's winning by submission over and over again. So I think he's proven that he's he's what he says he is. Now he's just got to finish off Rocky Shocker here, and that that high flying stuff Rocky likes to do out the window if he's got no legs. I hate to acknowledge that, but you're absolutely right. Derek Crow stomping down on that knee. I mean, he is working that knee. Rocky Shocker trying to smack some uh, life back into that limb. Trying to get some circulation going in that left leg. It's... Derek Crow goes to stand him back up. But the Rocker show stopper showing that the show's not over yet. But... Sidesteps the drop kick. And I think Rocky might have gone right back down on that knee. Player one showing why he is Mr. IWE over here just running through the competition and uh, putting a hurting on uh, Rocky Shocker in his second back-to-back -back match, really, of the evening. So, like, is he going to add Mr. Cardio to his uh, monikers? <laughs> Finally, there's the drop kick. Found its mark. Rocky's got a chance here. He can do whatever he wants to try to win this match. The only option Derek Crow has is to force his opponent to submit. Rocky Shocker looking for that sign of life. Looking that, for his knee. You can tell that knee's bothering him. I mean, he's like not moving there. He's just like holding on to that, that knee. Both competitors slowly getting back up to their feet. This match will continue now. Oh! He went back to it again. Just vicious. Oh, figure four. Now figure four. Oh. The figure four hurts anyway. Yeah. You add on top of that, whatever potential damage may have been done to Rocky Shocker's knee. Yeah, I mean, he's already been uh, working that thing over, so yeah. Rocky's looking for any way out of this here. He can Trying to turn the move over, trying to turn it over. If he manages to flip it over onto their stomachs, it reverses the pressure and it starts to hurt. Back under Derek Crow, and there it is. Derek Crow now is the one feeling the pain. Rolls it back over. Not for long. Not for long. And what happened? What happened? I think he's saying that he tapped out. No, no, it's a time limit draw. No, oh! The time limit has expired. Oh. Not before the time ran out? Did, did the time I, limit I, I, has expired, oh. which means this ends in a draw. Ooh. Derek Crow does Derek not Crow get the win in his happy. second. Derrick Rowe is not happy. Rocky, Rocky Shocker, Shocker asking for five more minutes. He wants five more minutes. I, 
Milwaukee the... wants five more minutes than Derek Crow. The Derek Crow doesn't want him... to end in a draw either. Uh oh, what do we got going on here? Maybe we're gonna get five more minutes. Joe's. Uh oh. We're about to find out. You guys want five more minutes? Doesn't matter. You're gonna tap out anyways. You don't deserve five more minutes. I'm the winner. Derrick Rose just uh, announcing himself the winner. Well, I mean, he had him ready to tap. It was right there. But he, he didn't tap Rocky out. Rocky Shocker got saved by the bell. Literally. Saved by the bell. That remains to be seen. We do not know if Rocky Shocker was about to tap out. I mean, he's got the, he's got, he's got the hair of Screech. I mean, he might as well. Derrick Crow walking away claiming to be the winner after a time limit draw. Rocky Shocker insists he can still go. Derek Crow, though, perhaps escaping here with his open challenge largely intact. He wasn't defeated. But he did not make Rocky Shocker tap out either. Good show, kid. Get him next time. Go home and rehab that knee. Yeah, he's going to need some, some time to recoup that thing. Now put on some metal and elevate that knee. Yeah. Look at this. Newcomer to IWE. I've heard the name mentioned a couple of times. Is this who I think this is? This is a 24 karat kid, and he is in here with the bling. Like, this cat can come hang with me. I mean, look at that. He does look like he'd suit in rather nicely amongst the gold at your table. He's out. Fans not sure how to handle him. Oh, I like it. Maybe one day he may even be wearing one of your belts there. Yeah, or I can make him some medallions. We do that too. You make uh, medallions over there? Check this one out. I see. So yes. Where where can people go and find your stuff, Scrappy? JDubbelts.com. Replica belts and medallions, I'm told. 24 karat kid uh, making his own entrance into the ring. Oh, he's grabbing the mic. He got something to say. I can see what this young man has to say. In order for me to introduce myself, I'm going to need complete silence from every single last one of you. Come on now, show the kids some respect. Man. Crowd and Houghton Lake. Crowd and Houghton Lake not giving him the time of day. Oh no, not not to fear oh, the 24 karat kid. Ooh, taking a little uh, page out of the Derek Crow book. I can't book. find the movie for one reason, and that's to make it to the top. Well, why else would you be here? I don't care about what any of you have to say. I don't care about what nobody in the back has to say. But if you think you had a gust to come out to this ring and show me that you're better than me, well, buddy, you got something in store. Because if you come to this ring and step in face to face with a 24 karat kid, I'm going to show you why ain't no other way but 24 karat. Oh. My man, my man. So who is it going to be that's going to come in and face? Family by Dustin, IWE Country Star. We're the Roughneck Dynasty. 
Who? We got a member of the Rough. Who is representing the Rough? Ne Big Buford. Big Buford. Okay. Rick Green. Oh my goodness, they're all here. Oh, who's answering the challenge? Is it Big Buford? It's Big Buford, I think. He seems to be leading the charge. Jeremiah Hughes and, uh, and uh, Bam heading back to the back here. Well, Big there Buford. we go. The, the debut, the IWE debut of the 24 karat kid, and he draws Big Buford. That's a uh, that's no joke for your first uh, your first day here, man. He's been a uh, Big Buford being a uh, kind Buf of mentored by uh, Rick Green here, and not just Rick Green, but the whole crew, man. The whole crew of the Roughneck Dynasty. We've no doubt learned a lot from them. Well, we're Ladies gonna we're gonna find out. The referee is Dr. Ryan. I like the moxie of this kid, man. I can't wait to see what he's got in the ring. Is he the only real man? Well, he's got to have moxie, man. You got to come in here confident. If you're going to come into IWE and climb to the top, like he said, you got to be confident. And he comes here fully ready and confident. Digging Big Buford since his arrival here in IWE, he's had a ton of success, lined himself with the uh, Roughneck Dynasty, and uh... right for a Kara kid, not quite getting the same response this Big Buford got. The time for cheering, the time for taunts has passed. All right, can't wait to see what this kid's got. Ooh. Ducks the first grapple attempt. He's got speed, that's for sure. Big Buford may not have been expecting that, but maybe he'll catch it a second time. They circle around. Incoming. Oh! Big Buford thought they were actually going to lock up this time. 24 karat kids so far really good at evading. We'll see what this guy can do once his opponent gets a hold of him. Wiley now lock up and driven straight back into the corner is 24 karat kid. Dr. Ryan attempting to get them pulled back out from the corner. And 24 karat kid launched clear across corner of the corner. And that's the power of Big Buford. Rolls right out of the ring and Buford's going out after him. Well. 24 karat kid needs to keep uh, his eyes on a swivel here because you got two guys out here that he's dealing with. That he does. And Buford is just putting it to wow. with a headbutt. Stiff headbutt. Knocked potentially both of them loopy. A little do -si do right into the ring there. Buford sends him right back in. Fans are loving it. This match has to get back into the ring. Both competitors here to continue. Oh! But as Brilliant. Buford is coming in, going for Kara Kid, kicks the middle rope I mean, the kid, up into his nether regions. The young kid is a, uh, got the wisdom beyond his years there. That was brilliant. That was a smart move. Swift strike into the midsection, the rib cage, and another one there from the 24 Karat Kid. He attacks them ribs. He takes the wind out of Big Buford. Buford uh, takes a third strike to the ribs. That could play to uh, 24 Karat Kid's you know, strong suit, which is probably, uh, you know, running, moving fast, speed, take the wind out of Big Buford. He ain't going to chase this kid down. Could very well be the case. Buford now doing whatever he can, which right now involves getting the crowd behind him. Riles himself back up to his feet. Break out of this headlock. Oh, man. The 24 Care Kids saw it coming. Oh, big boot to the face, too. Couple strikes to the side of the head of Big Buford. Uh -oh, now 24 Karat Kid looks like he may be going up top. Is he going up top? Uh-oh. Here we go. All the way up top. 
Buford so, seated position, middle of the ring. <laughs> Off of there, oh! And he's just down to, the, down to his feet and a slap across the face. And now into the pin, <laughs> shoulder up at one. I suppose you love that. I love it, it's so good. Oh, what am I doing? Oh man! Wow, that wasn't so good. Look for, for a leg jump across the back of the head, but Buford oh. sidestepped it. Clothesline to the new kid. And a big boot to match. 24 karat kid is reeling. On wobbly legs, walks right into a big sidewalk slam. Oh. Into the pin. One, two, no. Woo. 24 karat kid gets his shoulder up. That was close. Dr. Ryan says that was a two. Oh, that was no disputing him. That was close. Uh oh, Big Buford giving the signal here. What is he doing? Is he going to the top? Buford going up second rope at least. Oh man, there we go. Uh oh, uh -oh. oh. There we go, Bo drop into the pin. One, two, three. Buford gets the win. Over the incoming 24 karat kid. And the Roughneck Dynasty with another victory in the books. Hughes and Bam come down to join the celebration. The big Buford here. Tell you what though, good, sh good show so far from 24 Karat Kid. He may have been a little bit cocky and a little bit arrogant with Big Buford not realizing who he was going up against. Maybe the next time we see him, things may not quite be the same. That, I, I love the athleticism and speed from that kid. I don't think that'll be the last time we see the 24 Karat Kid, but the victory this time goes to Big Buford. Not our usual entrance we see from uh, the creature feature. And, no. as, and as much as I could get angry about him not giving me candy, I'm gonna let all that go right. Oh wait, maybe he'll roll we over do. here with candy. He does have Franken Bucket as always. Somber look upon his face as well. He's been through a mess. He has in the last month or so. And it does has a very somber look on his face as he rolls his out here to the to the ring. I, I've never seen, all the years I've been coming here and now working here, I've never seen uh, the creature feature uh, quite like this. Nor have I. He's pulled a microphone out of his jacket. Well, there we go. I guess uh, we're gonna get a creature feature. Houghton Lake still loves to see him. Oh yeah, without Overwhel a doubt. Overwhelming support for John Campbell here at the Artesia Youth Center. Undeniable, that's for sure. I love you guys too. You know, I thought for weeks about what I was gonna say when I came out here. Truthfully, I didn't know. I didn't know whether I'd be able to wrestle again. Still don't know. Didn't know if I'd be able to walk right again. Still don't know. But what I do know 
is that Facebook message after Facebook message, text message after text message, phone call after phone call. We talk about IWE family and I never thought, I never thought that I meant so much to the guys. I never, I never thought that my career meant so much to you. I thought I was just a guy who came out and got to wrestle once a month in front of all you people and you guys. You guys give me the chance to live my dreams. <laughs> when I started doing this 16 years ago, I was told every single day, you should just quit. You're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to make I was told whether I was, I was too fat, I was too skinny, I was too beat up, I was too broken, it, it, it doesn't matter. I, I was told I would never, ever amount to anything in, in pro wrestling. But these past 16 years, I got to do some of the coolest things I ever would have never, I would have never imagined. But the absolute greatest thing I have ever done, besides my wife over there, was star IWE because I got to know each and every one of you, and I love each and every one of you. What is he doing? He's attempting to stand. Dude, he's standing up. I know what kind of pain he's in. And the dude's standing up. That is not a comfortable spot for him right now. This Monday, I have an MRI on my hip. I don't know what the prognosis is going to be. I don't know how long I'm going to be out, but I will make all of you a promise right here as God is my witness, as all of you is my witness. I think as God is my witness, even if it's one last time, you will see me in the ring again. But until then, let's do this one more time. Hit the music. Brave, brave man. Facing the uncertainty of his own future. Hey man, as much as I've got my own little beefs with uh, John Campbell, man, you don't want to ever see a guy injured. No. You definitely want uh, a, a, an athlete to go out on their own terms, and uh, it seems like the creature feature is determined to do that uh, regardless of his injuries here. So guys, if you haven't already, get on the IWE social media. We'll, guys, we'll keep you updated on the condition, what's going on here, and uh, we wish the best for uh, the creature feature.
Um, even if he's stingy with his candies. Ugh. I'm at a loss for words myself. I cannot imagine what John is going through. I've fortunate, I am very fortunate that I have never been in that position. I hope that I never am. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Fans all gathered around Camp Bell over here in the corner as our Camp Bell doing his thing with Frankenbucket. Making his way to every one of the fans here. Oh man, and they're they're getting themselves some uh Nay, every the IWE family. Yep. Yeah, and can't deny that. Can't deny that. Thank you, John. Thank you for everything you've given us, everything that you've done for us. And the, the, the standing O, standing ovation for the creature feature. We're standing for him when he can't stand for himself right now. Just in case I don't get to do this for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, accompanied to the ring by President Frankenbucket. Hailing from the last house on the left in IWE country. Breaking at 260 pounds, he is the creature feature, John Campbell. His promise here today is that we have not seen the last of the creature feature and that he will be in that ring one more time. Ref champ, what can I say? Welcome back to IWE's Battle Zone TV. Axel Gear here, joined by Scrappy. We have a relative new come well new newcomer to here. I've heard about this individual. Josh Morris, and he is in fact in here. Now this dude has got some flavor. There's no doubt about that. That is putting it lightly. Love his energy. He says he's got the drip and the cheese like a fondue. And he can't wait for us to get a taste of Josh Morris.
accompanied by his own entrance singer. Oh wow. Hey, he's got got some moxie. I guess I'm not sure what I was expecting. I mean, when someone comes in with that kind of flavor, man, you know he's going to be hot with it. But his own hype man. Certainly got a lot of, uh, I'm sure there's a word for what it is he's got. I'm searching for it still. Well, uh, I don't know if he's expecting this. He's got a lot of sauce to spread here in IWE. But I, yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know that this is exactly what he was hoping for. Captain Tony Garrix. The gnarly one is in the building, and the fans are off the charts, per usual. Captain Tony Garrix. A great fan favorite here. Whoa! Using that chain. He ain't playing around. The hype man hightailing it out of the ring. Tony Garrix swinging that chain. Well, know anything about Tony Garrix? He'll be swinging them fists too. This is going to be one heck of a debut match from one Mr. Josh Morris. And Josh Morris has hopped up onto the top rope to be out of bounds, so to speak, before this match has begun. IWE fans telling uh, the sauce boss what they think of him, or at least what they think is gonna happen here. But I'm anxious to see what this kid's got. I love his moxie, man. Love He's, his attitude, love his flair. I can't wait to see what he brings to the table. He certainly has a lot of confidence. Fans love themselves in Dr. Ryan here. They seem to. Absolutely, this guy here. Starting to think this kid's a little bit full of himself. Shouting over here wants me to talk about him. Fans love them some Tony Garrett. Listen to that. Holy cow. There's Morris taking offense to the referee holding, indicating to his opponent. Josh Morris has to remember he's not the only person in this match. 
Also, this match hasn't begun yet, and he's already got his hand on the referee. Well, it's one of those things, man. It's like you got to get in the referee's ear right away to make sure you get a fair match. Here we go, bell rung. This match is underway. And Tony Garrix, quick to call the saucy boy a chicken. I was say, a little disrespectful for uh, not knowing this kid. We don't know. Did I, am I hearing a make is, him squeal chant? That is exactly what you are hearing. This is like a de deliverance match. I mean, is that even a gimmick? I hope not. I mean, so far, I, I'd like to say we've already heard the saucy boy squealing since he got in here. He threw the... Trying for a couple shoulder tackles, a big flying clothesline, and Tony Garrix is not phased. Off the ropes one more time. Big cross body finds no purchase in the captain. Uh, time to regroup, young man. Time to regroup. Regroup, rethink, retrain. You've got yourself a mismatch here. In come the... So oh, Ooh, there uh -oh. you go. Big boot to the arm. I'm afraid you might have made... With a big backhand shot. Taking down the sauce boss off the ropes. Big clothesline. Hits him with that shoulder tackle. The shoulder tackle. Yeah, the sauce boy. Don't worry, I'm here for you. Thanks. <laughs> Big stiff shot in there. Now, Tony Garrix, what is this about to be? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. oh, my goodness. Pumps. A pump chop right to the spine. And now, hard shots to the midsection. Tony Garrix walking across to the back. Opposite corner. Big oh. body avalanche. The entire ring shifted. Oh. I heard the metal. The hype man hopping up on the apron here, QT. I, I don't know if that's a good idea. Garrix, very calmly. I mean, I love his uh, Telling him to get the down. Idea. Oh! Big back neck from behind. A he hit him with a cutter from behind. It was kind of hard to see with the ref there. And our point Kicked of view. Kicked out of one, though. But he took advantage here, and that's smart from the young man. Morse going in hard. Elbow strike to the small of the back now. He's got, he senses his opening. Now he's not going to let up. That's very wise on this young kid. I'm draping him across the middle rope, though. My goodness. And now QT on the outside, choking Tony Garrix more. The referee's back is turned. Ooh, shot to the abdomen. Ugh. Some body shots there from the Absolutely. Young man. Tony Garrix caught in the corner. Eating strike after strike. And now Sauce oh. Boss trying to whip him out of the corner. No, he's working that shoulder. He's got that arm wrapped oh. over the top rope, and he is working that shoulder. You're absolutely right. I couldn't see the arm was wrapped. And now an eye rake. Hey, Josh man, Morris. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. My goodness. Now, keep stringing. Garrick's up in the ropes every time. And with the hype man going around on the outside, too, Garrick's going to have to have eyes in the back of his head. Oh, it's got to be nice to have a hype man to keep you just all pumped up during the match. That's good stuff right there. He's doing more than keeping Morris pumped up. Playing outside offense. But now Garrick's, though, ducks the attack. Now has Morris in the corner. Pounds him into the ground. Garrick's now... Picking Morris back up. Right, he's got, him. got him in the ropes. Club to the back and the shoulders, the shoulder blades. Now he's strung across the middle rope himself. Uh -oh. Off the opposite ropes and QT. The hype man pulling Morris out of the ring. Just in time. See, it pays to have a hype man. Pays to have a hype man. I need to get me a hype man. How'd you like it if I bought a hype man here? This is supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup here. And also, it's supposed to be inside the ring. These two are having fun outside the ring. I'm loving it. Ain't nothing wrong with having fun. Referee up to a count of three. Why you gotta be a party pooper, man? You have fun. 
this is not about fun here necessarily. I mean, I mean, to a point it is, but like, this is also supposed to be about competition. Ooh. The match has to happen in the ring. Now, Morris, with a surprise drop kick, finds a two count. Stays on him now. Knee strike to the sternum. And followed by an elbow. Wow. Hard leg drop across that midsection of the chest. Take the wind out of the, the big man doing that. Morris going up top. Second rope. Big money shot. Into the pin. One, two. Ooh, that that second rope frog splash finds a two count. Yeah, this kid's coming with it. I like it. Staying aggressive and uh, bringing the funk, so to speak. Tony oh. Garrix, though, starting oh. to phase off the blows. I was about to say, as soon as I say something. Striking back on his own, off the ropes. Ducks the line though, does Morris. Incoming though, oh, but caught uh -huh. by a captain. Oh! Dropped him right across the plank. Into the pin, one, two, oh, but Morris managed to roll his shoulder up. That may have been a weak pin there from Tony Garrix. Man, dropped him on his face and couldn't finish him. Maybe not thinking highly enough of Josh Morris, or maybe he didn't quite have the energy to get fully into the pin. Garrix, though, taking some offense here to QT on the outside. Got this QT up with on the apron. Ryan trying to get him off. Oh, no! Ah, oh, jeez. Morris takes out his own hype man as Garrix oh, gets out man. of the way. Come Garrix. on. Ooh. Derrick throws the punch, though, but... Oh, oh man. Eight, a fist to the face. Fist to the face from Cody Garrix into the pit. One, two, and oh my three. God. The captain wins it here. Wow. Talk about a knockout shot. Valiant effort by the young uh, Josh Morris. By the young saucy boy. Had, certainly had a memorable debut here in IWE. I'll certainly remember it for time to come. Josh Morris wants no more of the captain. QT a little worse for the win on the outside too. Tony Garrick's overcoming the numbers game. And pulling out the win here over the sauce boss. Saucy boy Josh Morris. Fans still giving it to the Saucy Boy long after the match. Houghton Lake letting Josh Morris know what they think of him. The thought is not very high, but the feeling appears to be mutual. Josh Morris seemingly thinking not far beyond himself to the point where he's got a hype man to help him out his to think about himself. His hype man's helping him right now from... Uh, for making a bigger mistake? Yeah, I was about to say, it's probably not a good idea in IWE country. No, the fans here are fierce and loyal. That they are. And a, a, a very upset saucy boy. And a very concerned hype man trying to, trying to reel him <laughs> trying back to in. Him back. <laughs> hey man, love his energy though, man. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Jacob Braun. Yeah. 
Evil Daddy, Mr. 500. And a couple of other ridiculous nicknames. Oh, what are you talking about, man? He's like the strongest guy in IWE. He is an impressive athlete, absolutely. A legitimate strong man himself, though the microphone is a tad bit heavy today. Now the fans given the evil daddy a hard time. Let the man speak. He's given the fans a hard time for a very long time. What, by beating their heroes? Among other things. He's given you a hard time too. He has, but I've probably deserved it, so. So, Jacob Braun's got an issue with somebody at IWE. Drawn. Did he just put his career on the line? If he doesn't win the Gladiator Championship, he walks away. What are we talking about here? We are going to see a historical event here. One of two things is about to happen here. Either Jacob Braun is about to become IWE Gladiator Champion, or we are never going to have, or we are at least not going to have Jacob Braun in IWE. That's, that's, that's crazy. I don't know why he would do that. Not against He's, a natural born killer. I mean, come on, man. This guy has got no remorse. He'll have absolutely zero problem sending Braun home. I mean, that's a, it's a wise tactic to get the champion to open up and defend their belt. An opportunity to make some history. Well, and give the, give the natural born ki killer a chance to kill the career. Well, Jacob Braun was right about one thing. Trevor Strahd's been running Ruckshaw all over IWE since he's been here. That he has, that's but why he's, he's got the Gladiator Championship. Regardless of how he got that championship, regardless of how he got the championship, he is the Gladiator Champion. Trevor Strahd, give him some respect. Let him speak. He is the champ. Yes, yes, tell him, tell them, tell everybody. him one little fool. One of a scrawny little fool. 
the beefy boy chants are coming back, but I think Trevor Stroud's got something for it. Wow. If Jacob Braun has got, got – is Trevor Stroud said – If, there, if said, there's some beef in there, Jacob Braun is willing to grill it up and eat it. I, I, I love it. Trevor Stroud says he will make this quick, and he, can, he can't wait to add – Trevor or uh, Jacob Braun to his res resume here. He wants to eliminate Braun from IWE. We're about to have ourselves a Gladiator Championship match. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for and it's for the IWE Gladiator Championship. Yes. One of the more gorgeous championship belts we've got here in IWA. If you need a replica, go to jdubbelts.com. But if you need a sweet pizza, you got to go to Better Pizza here in Houghton Lake. Because that stuff's cheesier than the, the sauce boy we had out here earlier. It's some good stuff. I'd like to thank Better Pizza for sponsoring us here in IWA country. We thank you very much. And here's the first, the champion. Handling from the third tank on the left and weighing in. Look at these two. He is Mr. 500 Evil Dirty Jacob Brown. Little flex off and talking, talking junk. I love it. And now is the fighting out of the Motor City, weighing at 245 pounds. He is for IWE Gladiator Champion. Yes. He calls it. Fans have no taste. The Natural Born Killer is one of the best IWE has to offer. And uh, this is going to be a great match with two of the best IWE has to offer I going up for agree. that championship. Absolutely agree, 100%. Jacob Braun and Trevor Stroud are both very impressive individuals, if a both a bit self-centered. But I suppose it is the nature of this business. It is often said that this is not ballet. This is professional wrestling, and it is gruesome at times. You cannot go into this with a heavy heart. You need to be able to leave all of that emotion, you've got to leave all of that sympathy at the door, or at least in your bag. You come into these into these buildings, you step in between these ropes, it's all about business and it is all about brutality. Hey. Trevor Strott and Jacob Braun locking up for the IWE Gladiator Championship. If Jacob Braun wins, he becomes Gladiator's champion. If he loses, he's gone from IWE. He will walk away. He has put this stipulation upon himself to, in order to draw out Jacob Braun, or in, excuse me, in order to draw out Trevor Strahd and to put that belt upon the line. I don't know how smart of an idea it is to put your career, uh, your IWE career on the line for it. But, it is clearly uh, very I important. Him, I will give him a... Uh, I give him an A for uh, testicular fortitude. He is, he is clearly very important to Evil Daddy that he managed to come away with this with the win. Well, yeah, because there's more on the line than just a championship for him. Mr. 500 has a specific meaning with him. There's a reason that we use that moniker, the reason he uses that moniker. It represents the 500 days that he was IWE heavyweight champion. And since then. But those days are long gone. Those days are gone. And the last. What? The last two years, Jacob Braun has Jacob Braun held gold in that time. I struggle to remember it, if at all. Oh, Jacob Perhaps, Braun with that dirty trip. Perhaps Jacob Braun is looking to see if he still has the opportunity, still has it in him to be a champion, and maybe that's what this means to him. Big scoop slam now into a pin, but just at the one count, does Trevor Strahd kick out? Rolls out of the ring. Just got to regroup. Jacob Braun now through. rolling out after him. Referee had started a 10 count, but now starts it over now that Jacob Braun has left the ring too. Dr. Ryan trying to get them back into this ring. And they're contending to just fight it out. They're heading over to the bleachers. We still have fans over there. Didn't even give them a chance to move. Hey man, it's you know, it, it's you got to be careful when you're at an IWE show because it, it's fan participation whether you want it or not. Sometimes here, we certainly try to keep our fans safe over here in IWE country, 
And we certainly don't tr try to let the wrestlers get right up and per up close and personal with the fans. You know, for their safety, for everyone's safety. Hey, man, when you got a, a battle like that, things oh. spill out everywhere. Big suplex now that this has come back into the ring. Trevor Strutt into the pin, but a uh, kick out at one. Back into the pin cover again. Dr. Ryan says he found a two count. Now the chin lock now applied to Mr. 500. And now hooking over, hooking the leg, or hooking his leg over the arm. Oh my goodness, a big clubbing blow to the heart. Hurry go right to the chest and the rib cage, the sternum. The one taking the breath out of uh, Jacob Braun. And you know, that's Finds a, a longer two count doing it. It's a smart move because, I mean, Jacob Braun has got cardio for days. So if you can suck the wind out of this guy, it's only gonna help. That he does. Jacob Braun is all about that kind of stamina, about the cardio, about, and, the, and about just the raw strength and power. Trevor Strahd, on the other hand, is about opportunity and about seizing the moment and about picking out your opponent's weak spot. Oh, and, and he's just absolutely a surgeon at this stuff, too. I mean, he's precise, you're absolutely right. Jacob Braun ducks the line, though, but caught into a side slam by Trevor Strahd and into a pin, but Jacob Braun has a hold of the rope. Hey, Dr. Ryan, very careful to watch ring positioning. And when somebody's out of bounds like Jacob Braun was just then. Well, Jacob Braun is lucky he was in that position there because he's getting it put to him right now by the chain. Oh, here we go Trevor with this Strong tornado calling. DDT. Oh, no, he's oh, not. Oh, no, he's not. I thought he was going Going a suplex the... into the turnbuckle, maybe, but J Jacob Braun counters it. Suplex of his own. Trevor Strong feeling it now, and Jacob Braun trying to feel the fans, feel the energy off of these fans. Fireman's carry, hoists him up like he's nothing. Trevor Strahd, nowhere to go. Oh, but, there but we wait, go. Slips out of it and thrusts Jacob Braun into the corner, shoulder first. There's no padding on that, that is solid steel. And dumps him out onto the apron. Trevor Strahd now, outside the ring. Has Mr. 500 in his hands and throws him head first into the opposite buckle, off the corner post. Dr. Ryan up to a count of three, about ready to count these two out. In the event of a count out, leave the title will stay with the champion. Jacob Braun, it is in his best interest to get this match back into the ring. Jacob Braun bounces Trevor Strahd's head off that same post. To give him a taste of his own medicine, rolls back into the ring just to break the count now, rolls back out. Trevor Strahd needs to do something here. He's in jeopardy of losing that championship. You may be right, but that can't happen outside the ring. What is this? Oh my goodness. Oh no! Trying to suplex Tyler, Tr uh, Trevor Strahd onto the ramp, onto the wooden rampway. Is it gonna happen? Oh, oh. my goodness! The entire stage just shook. That is nasty, unforgiving rampway there. Wow. Dr. Ryan now making sure the competitors are okay out there. Well, you can tell Jacob Braun is taking, the, he ain't playing around today. Trevor Straw needs to regroup here. Trevor Straw is back into the ring now, thrown there by Mr. 500. And is Mr. 500 about to begin a new counting cycle on an IWE Gladiator Championship. Are we about to see 500 days as Gladiator Champion too? Trevor Strahd ducks out of the way. Jacob Braun only found the buckle. Fisherman suplex now. Love and that. Jacob Braun just gets the shoulder up. Love that suplex, absolutely perfect. That's what I was talking about, being a surgeon there. Hooked that leg and bridged over for the pin attempt. That's good stuff right there. Definitely a smart move, but did not quite get the job done. But has the damage been done now? Well, now we've got it reversed here. He's got the momentum on his side, so. Oh, no! Jacob Braun, the strong man, fireman's carry, gets him back up. Airplane spin! Sets the natural born killer back down. 
And with a big clothesline, both men are down. Well, that, 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 that little spinny helicopter thing got them both uh, loopy here. Great right little bit. Dr. Ryan now starting the 10 count. These men can't be got back up to their feet by the count of 10. They will not continue in this match. Ryan up to a count of six, and neither man has even gotten. Well, they're moving, okay. they're rolling around. Both now finally up to their knees. The referee calls off the count as they resume combat. Oh. Wow, stiff headshots, head to head, literally. Forearm oh. strikes, open hand chops. Oh my goodness. Like I said at the beginning of this match, you've got to be nothing but brutal in professional wrestling. That's exactly what we're seeing here. Well, as long as the natural born killer's got this belt, that's what it's going to take. Headbutt to the clavicle. Stiff shot to the shoulders and the neck. Jaw, shoulder, the entire area of Trevor Straw eaten. Strikes. A big spinning wheel kick. Takes down the natural born killer. Comes back in with a line, but... Jacob Braun ducks it, back body drop. Jacob Braun pulling off the straps. Oh. He feels he's got his moment. Oh, he's the feeling strong it. man looking to pull his strength right here. He's feeling it. And take the IWE Gladiator Championship. Big hearty slam, one, two. But just barely, just barely. Hey, Does Trevor Strong get the shoulder up? A kick out's a kick out. A kick out is a kick out. You're absolutely right. But to your point, Trevor Stroud is definitely still reeling. In quite a bit of pain. And Jacob Braun now thinking, what is my next move? You better jump on it, though. Jacob Braun has always been of the slow, methodical pace. He's picking out his move carefully. Pulling, pulling the ripcord. Ducks the line, though, does Trevor Stroud. Back grapple. Discus close line! That was Into the pin. One, two, no! Oh, man, the impact on that close line. I can't believe he didn't get a three count. You can hear it all the way over here. Jacob Rudd did not get that shoulder up by much. But enough was enough. He got it up barely. Barely is enough. This match continues. Jacob Rudd's career here in IWE continues. But for how much longer? Trevor Straw going up to the second rope. Oh, oh, with a oh, a little not so subtle. Not to the t to the Dean boys. Well, and who did he take that title off of? He took it certainly off right off of Tyler Dean. Oh, but Jacob Moore just dropped the knee or dropped his head across the knee. One, two, three. Jack, he's done it. He's done it. Dr. Ryan fights the three what? count. He's Wait saying that is the no. pin! No way! Jacob Braun has won! No way! Look! His foot's on the rope! His foot's on the rope! Dr. Ryan found the three count! No way! Give the man his music! His foot's on the Give rope! Give the man his music! His foot's on the rope! No! We have I'm ourselves a new IWE his Gladiator Champion! His foot's on Jacob the rope! Jacob Braun! His foot's on the rope! Mr. 500 now his begins on day rope. one! His foot's on the rope! His foot was on the rope. There's no way. His foot was on the rope. Dr. Ryan checking in. What yes. Is, what? Finally. What, what? What? Yes, he's waving it off. No. His leg was on the rope. Dr. He's, Ryan has taken back his decision. That's what he. That's what it looks like he's telling. That's what he's telling Jacob Braun. He's taking that belt back. He's taking that belt back. Oh, and behind the referee, <laughs> Trevor Straw just issued a low blow to Jacob Braun. Oh no, not like this. Not like yes. this, Trevor. The Trevor, born killer. not like this. What the oh, God. What a slam, one, two, yes. Yeah. just happened absolutely absolutely what just happened the champ is still the champ and Jacob Braun is no more just lost his career here in IWE 
This cannot be what Jacob Braun wanted. Oh, of course it's not what he wanted, but that's what he got. He asked for it, and he got it. He got all of the natural born killer. I'll give it to you that the champ. I will give it Tell to you. Tell him how it is, champ. That Trevor Strode's Tell him, champ. champ. No one else. I got me Was definitely him, still on the rope when the pin let go. Yeah, man, there's no controversy here, man. This is It is what it is. Referee made the decision that and the that pin was, did not count. That was the best decision the refs made all night. He took back the pin on grounds that there was a rope break that he didn't see initially. He took back the count, issued the match to restart. And while he was restarting the match, Trevor Strahd issued the low blow. The lowest of blows to end the career of Jacob Braun here in IWE. Wow. Didn't think I'd see that coming. I didn't think I'd see it, but he, hey. Overwhelming support for Jacob Braun here in IWE. We don't know when we may see him again, if ever. Well, he's gone. We ain't gonna see him here ever again. the poor man an outro thank you Jacob Braun IW strong man Mr. 500 evil daddy has left the building <laughs> Emulator had something for you. He's left his glasses over here with me. Oh, know. and he gave you a look, boy. He gave you a look. And in that look, he communicated a thousand threats. The fans all over. <laughs> all over the greater good. We are gearing up here for a main event match. Four on four, eight man tag. Oh man, this is gonna be chaos in the ring without a doubt. Already in the ring, Cream Street Mafia. Draven O'Shawns. And B. 
big Bill Blackwell. On the opposite side, the IWE Heavyweight Champion, Backwoods Bam, J.J. Hughes. And a couple more. And the stunt man and Bojack. You know, now he's got Bojack acting like a goof. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Like, what, what is Bojack doing? He's got a kick. And Following along and what and is this? Really? What is going on here? Bella Star? It's like full circle here. We're all getting along, we're all on one page, and you know what else? I bet they're all okay. You know, that's a matter of opinion. Look at Bojack, that smirk I mean, on his face. I'm certainly okay with this. It's good to see the stuntman. Good to see Bojack with a smile on his face for once. And you know what? Let's put a hat in the cave. You know what? Good on Bella Star. Good on her. Flipping chaos over here, outside the ring. What has he got? Does he have? What Bam has, has brought a turkey on a stick. What it looks like. It's a. You know, he's always got these weapons. Why do we have a turkey on a flipping what stick? What weapon? I, he's always got something. And JJ has a, a rubber bunch. chicken. Is that a weapon too? Yes. If they no, use it as not. one, it sure is. Look at this. Oh my gosh. No respect here for the fans for Stossel. Stuntman Michael almost got clubbed by his own partner rolling in the ring there. He's got to be careful. Bam is a crazy person. I mean, that is the risk a stuntman takes typically, but. I mean. Listen to the fans here, man. They're just They're going They're letting Chris Stossel over here with the greater good. They're letting him have it. Oh, they are. What do we got going on here? We got like photo ops with these guys. What happened to Bojack? His mean streak is gone. Look at him. Bojack realized he had a good thing chicken. going with Stuntman and embraced it. Uh. And maybe, and maybe, he then started talking to Bella Star and said, hey, this can be a good thing. Give it a shot. And, now, and maybe that's what happened. Maybe that's why she's here now. Now, this match is going to be crazy because it's an eight-man tag. That it is. But if any champion is pinned, belts will be changing hands? Did I hear that right earlier? Did I get the memo right on that? Joe's freaking out over here. We still have a raffle to do. For the Ring Warren shirt from John Campbell and the jacket, we still have the raffle to do. Would any of you find gentlemen like to help me out? Rick Green is on the team. Okay.
This is craziness. It's always craziness when you get this many, this much humanity in the ring, but there's a lot of big people in this match. A lot of bodies. Who gave Stossel a Who gave Stossel a microphone? I don't know, but they need to give him some respect and let the man speak. They just scream all these names at him all the time. I think they're screaming one name over and over and over. Referee for this contest appears to be Dan Tanner, and he better do something to get some order happening over here. It's chaos. It's, it's just, it's, it's, I, it's, it's chaos on the edge it, at any second now. It, it, yeah, it, it's come unraveled here already. Well, it is the main event. Oh. Bam, it's, not looking to waste any more time. See, I heard oh. rumblings of this before. See, I heard something about this. I heard some murmurs, some talks about this earlier. Is it going to happen, though? Got here. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. So Bam has accepted the challenge. He's putting his title on the line. The, the tag titles are going to be on the line from the greater good side. And from the sounds of it, from what you were saying, if it's to be believed to be true, any champion that gets pinned, the title's gonna change hands. Yes, yeah, so I heard rumors about this before rumblings, but I didn't think it was for real. And uh, and I, I obviously Stossel wanted to get this, make this happen, and he was able to talk Bam into it. So if Bam gets pinned, he loses his title. If either of Cream Street Mafia gets pinned, they lose their title. So now there is so much more on the line in this match than just Brett. And let's not forget that the, the uh, advantage is already on the greater good side with Dan Tanner refereeing this match. Well, the, the, and right now the fans are chanting for Ref Ryan. I don't blame them. I don't blame them the slightest. I want Ryan too. Tanner, Tanner is a perfectly fine referee. Even just trying to get the stipulations out here, Joe's struggling with. It's, it, this is crazy. This is unprecedented. I don't remember having a match like this in IWE. There's a lot on the line here for an eight-man tag. The Bo Jack and Roberto Cruz talking over here. Yes. So that's I would sure like to see Stuntman and Bo Jack as tag team champions. No, we've got the best tag team champions in the history of the company right now. There's Fine, no I'll, need to change that. Fine, I'll do you one better. Let's say Bam pins one on the cream street. He and JJ get to be the tag team champions. Bam becomes a double champion. Well, how about Roberto Cruz had a chance last at the last show. What if one of these other guys, what if, what if, what if Nick Baker wins the championship and he's a champ champ? How about that? It, that's exactly what would happen. Or, 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 or Roberto Cruz. Imagine Emulator as the IWE world champion. He's got the chance at it right now. If anybody if, on this side of the table, 
If anybody on, on Greater Good Side pins Bam here tonight, they are the IWE Heavyweight Champion. And I'm going to tell you what, if Big Blackwell gets his hands on that belt, I don't know who would take it off. So let's, this is crazy. And look at the size of our resident giant, Bill Blackwell. I mean, this dude is a monster. He could easily take that belt off of Bam, and who would take it off him? He's big, but he's not invincible. Ah, yes. The best tag team in the IWE history. That was the best thing about you being gone last time. I got Nick Baker to come out here and sit with me, and we had a great old time. Is that why the chair smells funny? I'm going to tell him you said that. It Man. pains me to see those belts back on Cream Street Mafia. Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, those things look beautiful on the champs. And their Oh, Jack, what happened to you, man? What, what happened to us? I explained it once. Rewind the tape. Uh, and then this goof here. IWE's resident dollar store Evil Knievel. Here we go. The latest inductee to the IWE 2022 class of the Hall of Fame. Let's see, Let's see, we got Roberto light. Cruz come over here. You can sit in this chair, Roberto. Uh, One reception for the cutthroat. J.J. Hughes out here choking his chicken. Just unbelievable. Wow. And bam with the... Oh. See? This goes right we back to what I was talking match. about. Chaos out here. No one else I've ever seen that just spends the entire time the ring announcers addressing him, just chasing everyone else around the ring. Well, and, and just Roberto, mayhem. Roberto Cruz had to grab a, 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 a crate from production to protect himself. What are we doing here? Oh, by the way, that crate's a weapon. Not when you're using it as a shield. Apparently everything you can pick up is a weapon there, Scrappy. Only so was the turkey. If you and use it, looked, it as one. It looked like it was plush. Yeah, but there was a, a log underneath it. So the log was the weapon, Scrappy. Yes, and just because it had a, a, a hat doesn't make it any less of a I, weapon. That was the log. The turkey was a bit too far. Roberto Cruz. Very frustrated over here. He's just... You know, understandably so. These fans are all over him for no reason. No reason? No reason. Bam's the one walking around here with a baseball bat. I mean, look at that thing. Looks that like is, a tree that fell on the back of the property somewhere. No umpire would allow that on the baseball field. He's got enough wood in his hand to heat his whole little cabin over there in his little backwoods roughneck dynasty little place. So you go right ahead and continue finishing that. I'm going to yeah. let you flounder. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> Thanks. I hear the bell. This match has begun. Starting off for each side, we have the cutthroat and the ratings booster. Here's a little facing uh, off. David versus Goliath here. Oh no, what does Blackwell do it? Rip it apart, Blackwell. Get rid of that chicken. Sick of that chicken. We had to deal with that chicken last time, the last show. Oh, JJ taking exception 
to Blackwell handling his chicken. Throw the cutthroat across the ring, but then finds empty turnbuckle himself. Here comes the cutthroat. Oh, oh no. Missed that himself up. What a back elbow strike to the big man. Creates some separation. He ducks the big man's line. Well, goes for the barrel punch. Blackwell caught him. Ripcord throw. Ducks the line, though. Jeez. What Nasty. a slam. Nasty slam. I mean, that is a lot of humanity coming from crashing Blackwell, down. From Blackwell, a slam like that will cave in your chest. And he's not done yet. Chasing JJ to the outside. This match already going out to the outside here. Eight man tag main event here on Battlezone TV. Where's the cutthroat going? Oh, he don't play around either. He's crazy. Off he's the just... stage! What a flying attack! You hit that flying knee or, or leg that... drop. Uh, yeah, knee and arm both just brought the big man down, threw his entire body weight at him. Brought the, the big man down on, the, on this gym floor here at the Artesia Youth Center. And there is no padding out here, not even those thin little mats. I mean, there's nothing out here. Nothing out here at all. Oh, no. Oh, oh my goodness. Holy cow, JJ put it on What a the cannonball giant. shot from the cutthroat. Up against Blackwell on the corner of the ring, outside of the ring. Again, no padding out here. Well, he not needs on the to floor, not on the post. He needs to stay on the big man. Into the pin now, and of course, Dan Tanner, why would he bother? JJ should know this. He used to be part of the greater good. He's reaped the benefits of that for quite some time. Bojack tagged in now. And big body avalanche to Blackwell in the corner. And now it's Bojack's turn. Stomping a mud hole in a Bill Blackwell in the corner. You maintain your position that way. You'll keep, maybe you'll keep some, build some momentum maybe. But you're not going to keep the big man down doing that. It only buys you some time. Well, Stuntman tagged in. Hall of Famer Stuntman Mike. Big headbutt to the midsection. Diving shoulder tackles. This is a smart move by these the, the, these guys. Keep the big man in the corner there. Don't let him get out. man comes in for the last strike, JJ tags in again. Knee strikes to the big man in the corner. Off the opposite side. Runs, the, runs his knee right across the face. Big drop kick. The big man is dizzy. Oh, the with cannonball on the chest too. And the champion tagged in. Bam is in! And biting on the head! Come on! Come on! Get in there! You expect Dan Tanner to get in and do anything in a hurry? Big knee strikes to the big man! And right back to the head again! Repeated head butts! Well, I didn't see My this God. coming, but it's they are putting it to big belt Bill Blackwell here in the corner. And tag to Bojack! My God, this is insanity. Blackwell trying to get back up to his feet. Quick. He's in enemy territory here. He is surrounded by all four of his opponents, tagging in and out, cycling out on him. Double team maneuver, driving Jared by a Hughes back first into Blackwell. Big knee strike to the top of the head. Great teamwork from JJ and, and the gang over here. I, I can't deny that. Bojack tagged back in. Blackwell trying to fight his way free. Sends Blackwell off the opposite side, but Black, uh, Bojack ducks the line. Oh, and Big he's back a elbow. giant elbow. And now finally, Blackwell able, uh, able to tag out, and in comes the emulator, Draven O'Shawns. Just stomping the legs of David O'Shawn, big LDT. Trying to ex hyper extend that knee. And now wrapping around it. Smart the, move by uh, Draven there. Draven O'Shawn's the dominant mind. My God. Now Bojack trying to break free. And Draven is still just continually wrapped around that leg and hammering on the knee. Not letting up despite the overwhelming strength of the mighty Bojack. 
Measures to get to the rope. And he wasn't letting go fast enough, even despite the referee's count. Bam had to run in and make the breakup. Roberto Cruz in here to... Cruz tagged in. Putting it on Bojack. Roberto Cruz. Roberto Cruz at the last show had an opportunity at the title, and I know he's angry, came up short, and he's going to take it out on Bojack here. I'm going to tell you what. As you can see it happening right here. Choking Bojack with his own American flag cape. Well, see, that's what you get for wearing that goofy stuff. And now Roberto, Roberto Cruz, Nick Baker on the emulator, all just hammering away at Bojack while Bill Blackwell has Dan Tanner distracted at ringside. Like it would have made a difference. Tanner doesn't give a crap what the greater good does. Hey, man, they're out here putting it on him. That's what happens when you get an eight-man tag. Nick Baker now trying to antagonize. Oh, that big shoulder tackle into the gut there. Because now Bojack is the one caught in enemy territory. Nick Baker, the legal man. Slow and methodical, and Nick Cruz Baker. Cruz holding on to that cape. Hold on to that American flag cape around Bojack's neck. Hey Bam, man, that's what you get Bam for wearing that. Bam coming outside to do something about it with the log in hand. And he's he's got to be careful if he gets himself disqualified or gets his team disqualified. Who knows what they may happen oh, for Bojack the future of the hit. championship? Bojack, Bojack hit the stunner. Uh, uh. Bojack hit the stunner on Nick Baker in the ring. Both of them crawl into their corners here. JJ Hughes in. Blackwell is in. Here they come. Oh. Sh shoulder tackle in midsection. Rocks the big man. A second one, too. And in comes for the spear. Oh my God. The spear takes down the big man. The cut throw into the pen. Dan Tanner finds a one. And, and the Bojack finally just overpowers. The big man just gets chucked. Just chucks JJ. Chucks him off. Like Ragdoll. Open palm oh. traps, both know. back and forth between the cutthroat and the ratings booster. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to change uh, exchange strikes with this guy. I mean, oh. come on, it's like getting hit with a, a ham. Oh, picks up the cutthroat. Picking up the cutthroat, but the cutthroat is resisting. JJ Hughes resisting. Blackwell trying. Now, meanwhile, JJ finally just to the midsection to break up the hold. JJ off to the turnbuckle. Bam, oh. straight into a big clothesline. Turning JJ inside out. I mean, that's the power of the big man right there. My God. Holy cow. JJ, I don't think knows where he is. Oh, and he just got oh. stomped. Stomped back down. Oh, knee to the face. Just vicious stuff. To the face. Yeah, just vicious stuff. You gotta love it. Oh man, picking picking JJ back up by the chin just oh. to slap him in the face. And he falls backward into the enemy territory turnbuckle. And the emulator, Draven O'Shawn's back in. Oh, that delayed drop kick right in the chest. Got some hang time on that. Pulls him into the middle, into the pin. One, two. JJ a little too quick to kick out though. And now Draven. The sleeper hole choking deep. What? Oh, into a roll. Schoolboy though rolls him up. One. Draven gets out at one. Draven closer to a three count if he had a regular referee. Right back on him though, right back on him. And aggressive and just stomping him everywhere he can stomp him. Look Draven, at this guy. Draven O'Shawns is absolutely the dominant mind. I, I love the mean streak. I love the mean streak that he that He, he is a very intelligent person, but he has very stupidly aligned himself with a very bad group of people. What are you it, talking about? It, it is champion. only a matter of time for the greater good. Champions. It is only a matter of time for the greater good. Look at that Corrupt. knee. Draven O'Shawns so much. Look at that knee of JJ. If the greater getting, good comes at his expense. Look at that knee JJ's got. I know. Oh JJ's knee God. being twisted. Whoa! See, you see. Draven ch kicked the chicken what? at my head. Well, what did you do to make him so angry? I mean, he's been coming at you. You gotta, 
He started to be nice to that guy. Meanwhile, in the ring, Nick Baker fending off attacks from the cutthroat. Coming back in, my goodness. I love it. Stiff shoulder tackle that is great. to J.J. Hughes brings down the cutthroat. J.J. trying to do something and just it hit a brick wall. Oh man, and twisted Baker. his neck around, leading him by his chin and twisting his neck. It's sickening. Oh, look at that. Wow. Boot to the face. Throwing JJ into the combined feet of Cruz and Joe Shawns. Oh. oh. Cruz now in this match. Ah, uh, Roberto Cruz. One half the tag team champion, showing careful. you why he is a champ. If this goes sour and Cruz gets pinned, he loses the tag team championships. He and Nick Baker both will lose the tag team championship. That said, JJ is in no man's land. He is caught. And what is that? What is that that Cruz has in his hands? He is, it looks like his own wrist tape unwrapped it and started shoving it in the throat of JJ Hughes. Now the big man Blackwell back in. Oh. Point to the chest. Turns him inside out. I mean, that, that was nasty. I believe it was a knee, a knee or a foot. It doesn't matter. Now the laziest pin I've ever seen, and Bojack took offense. Well, Runs it, in and breaks up the pin. And it still took the breakup, probably. Holy cow. My God. Ooh, JJ with that jawbreaker. JJ. Has a hold of the ratings booster. Goes up to the top rope. Oh no! Oh! Got him with his own cutter! The big man hit JJ with his own cutter from the top rope. Wow! Holy cow! I, I've not That's... seen that kind of agility from the big man like that yet. That was absolutely amazing. And JJ is in big trouble. Blackwell's not too much better off. He may have hurt himself on the landing. It's gonna be who gets Neither to the corner up. first here. Who's gonna get the advantage? Bam is tagged in! And in comes Nick Baker as well! Nick Baker sent into the turnbuckle. Big headbutt from the hardest head in all of pro wrestling. Backwards, bam! Like a battering ram, this dude just running with his head. Oh, and a third one to the chest. Meanwhile, Draven O'Shawn's being chased off. By Stuntman Mike, this has become three on three. Oh, look at Nick Baker Nick draping Baker. Up the champ. Draping the champ. Oh. DDT with the second rope. Nice. I mean, there's just fights everywhere, guys. It is all over the place. Now, Nick Baker. Oh, Baker with the big Baker bomb. Chaos in combat at ringside. Oh. Baker bomb. And Rick Green sacrificed Jump. himself to save Bam. Jumped in the way of it. He rolled Bam out of the way. And Nick. Bam now. Oh no. R Roberto oh, Cruz come in behind. Up to the back of the neck of backwards Bam. Three yes. two. Yes. What? Yes. Yes. Nick Baker has the three count on yes. backwards Bam. <laughs> Nick Baker just won the title. That was the three! That was the three! Unbelievable! Nick Baker has pinned backwards Bam! He's become the champion! Announce it! He's the champ, buddy! It goaded him into putting the title this on the line. This is the best day in IWE history. Green Street's got all the gold, baby. All the gold. I cannot believe it. And new heavyweight champ, Nick Baker. Nick Baker. Green Street. I love it. And I Bam cannot is, believe what I just saw. And Bam is dejected. 
And these guys are... Bam never wanted to back down from a fight. He said it himself. He had all the confidence in the world. Nick Baker, new champ. I love it. Oh man, IWE is gonna be so amazing going into the holidays in the new year. It couldn't get any better. This is like an early Christmas present for me. I love this. Oh my goodness. And to, and to see, uh, to see the dejected look on Stuntman Mike's face. Uh, IWE will be plans to return to the Artesia Youth Center December 17th. A show to benefit our own creature feature, John Campbell. And another opportunity to see all the great IWE gladiators, including the double champ, Nick, Nick Baker, Baker. Of the Cream Street Mafia, the tag team champions, is also now IWE heavyweight champion. What a great day in IWE. Hold that up proud. Hold them belts up proud, big man. Yes. Yeah. Greater good have carrying a lot of the gold now. Most powerful faction I hope in the company. Happy. I hope they're happy for what they had to do to get it. Uh-oh, what do we got here? Well, Craig Stoss is still in the ring. I don't think he realizes Bojack is right behind him. Oh, no! And a mighty stunner to Craig Stossel. Mighty Bojack. Stuntman Mike and Bella Star is saying that this is not over yet. What's Stuntman got and thinking planned here? What are they doing to poor Stossel? The cutthroat and Stuntman Mike standing him back up again. He's lifeless, he's helpless, he's defenseless, and it's a nobody stunner! Bojack is beside himself! Unbelievable. And shoving that turkey onto the head of Craig Stossel. If there's any the, silver line in this disres, whatsoever. The disrespect. And Greater Good has just left them out here high and dry. They've taken the championships and ran. All that's left them by here now is a very helpless Craig Stossel. Looks good on him. Looks good. What do we got here? Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, the disrespect is real. The disrespect, this disrespect is real. disrespect, as you say, is well earned. The man has had no respect for anybody else he's here not, except uh, he's himself not an in his own faction for the last two years plus. He's not an in ring performer, and they're stunning him over and over and over. It hasn't stopped him getting his grubby little hands involved in every little aspect of this company. This feels good. This is therapeutic. Unbelievable. Craig Stossel nowhere to go but down at this point. Oh no, and then the, the oh, Cream Street's flag. Bittersweet moment, especially for that man over there at the top of the ramp, backwards Bam, taking in the moment and realizing his championship reign has actually ended. Nick Baker is now your new IWE Heavyweight Champion. But Bam, it wasn't for lack of trying, buddy. Never wanted to back down from a fight. That old good face hit from the sticks. Backwards Bam!
Thank you so much for joining us here on IWE Battle Zone TV for Scrappy. I am Axel Gear. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time right here. Thank you and good night.